Hello and welcome back. In today's video, let's have a look on how we can make a portrait photo more glamorous. Here is the end result for this photo. That looks pretty awesome, so let's start. Before I remove all the layers, here's a quick tip for you. You can always make a snapshot of your document by using the snapshot panel. This will allow you to restore the document to the current state. If the snapshot panel is not enabled for you, you can always enable it from the studio view menu. I can press the add snapshot button and give the snapshot a name. Now that I have a snapshot, which will allow me to restore this document, I can now safely remove all the layers except the original image layer. Perfect. The method I'm going to share with you will use four duplicates of the image. I can right click and select duplicate or use the shortcut key command J. Let's number the duplicates so it will make it easier for me to explain what needs to be done. So the first step is to make a more dreamy look and enhance the colors. For this I'm going to hide layer 4 and set the blend mode of layer 3 to screen. This will create an overexposed image and in a sense will flatten the image. Now I'm going to group layer 3 and 2. Once I have my group, I'm going to add a Gaussian blur to this group. In the Gaussian blur dialog, don't forget to turn on the Preserve Alpha checkbox and increase the blur radius until everything is blurred, but make sure you still see the face. In my example, it's about 30 pixels. Now, the trick here is to set the blend mode of the group to difference. Once we set the blend mode to difference, we get a dark image with all the details showing up. This is because the difference blend mode shows us the difference between the two layers, and as we blurred all the details in the group, the details will show up if we compare it to the original image. This end result will be blended in with the original image. To do that, I'm going to group layer 1 with this group. Now I will blend this with the original image using the soft light blend mode. This creates this soft glow effect on our image, which makes the image more dreamy. However, this is of course way too much. To neutralize it, I will now use layer 4 and set its blend mode to soft light. Have a look at that. That looks amazing already. If you want to get the glow back, you can adjust the blend range of layer 4 and lower the shadows from the underlying layer. Depending on your photo, you can also adjust the blend range of the group below layer 4 to control the glow effect. Let's have a look at the before and the after. I will duplicate the original image and move it to the top so we can quickly compare the before and the after. Pretty amazing. To complete the process, we can add a final adjustment on top of layer 4. This can be a vibrance or a shadows and highlight adjustment. In this case, I will use the vibrance adjustment and increase the vibrance and saturation to be a little over the top. After I close the dialog, I'm going to change the blend mode to it to multiply and decrease the opacity until it looks natural again. This step will give your image more warmer and deeper colors. Let's quickly compare with the starting image. Quite a difference. To finish up this image, I think the eyes of the model can use a bit of color. I'm going to do that by using a curves adjustment, but you can use any other adjustment, like a hue adjustment. I want to give the eye of the model a bit more blue-greenish color and want to brighten it up. So I will adjust the color channels and the master channel. While doing this process, focus only on the eyes. Once I have an adjustment, which I think would look good, I will invert the adjustment by pressing command I and then paint them back the adjustment in the eyes using a white brush. As you notice, the effect is too strong but we can lower the opacity to make it look more natural. I'm not really happy with the color of the eye, but the nice thing about working non-destructively is that you can always go back and fine-tune your adjustments. 
I will go back to the curves adjustment and fine tune it until I'm happy. I have sped up the process, but you see that I will go back multiple times until it feels good. Perfect. And we're done. Before moving on, let's make a snapshot of it so I wouldn't lose my changes. Here are some ideas for you for different effects. You can change the blend mode of layer 2. For example, multiply generates a very sharp image. I have used four duplicates, but I will quickly show you how you can create the same effect with three duplicates, which fits more in the way that Affinity works with child layers. Let's start from scratch and create three duplicates. Instead of using a fourth duplicate, I will use a curves layer and make it a clip child of layer 2. I can now set the blend mode of this adjustment to screen. This generates the same effect as applying the layer to itself in screen blend mode. I can now add the Gaussian blur as a child to layer 2. If I now put the blend mode to difference, we get the same result as earlier. I can now move this as a clip child to layer 1 and change the blend mode of layer 1 itself to soft light. If I now enable layer 3, after I set this blend mode to soft light, we get the same result as earlier. The document is organized a bit differently, but the end result is the same. I just wanted to share with you that you can achieve the same steps in different ways. Before leaving you, let's try this technique to other images. In order not to repeat the same steps over and over, I have created a macro which creates the four layers as explained. So let's apply the macro to this image. Awesome! What I like about this technique is that it generates a glamorous glow and darkens the skin tone. Let's quickly compare it with the original. Pretty cool. Here is another image. Let me apply the macro to create our layers. The result is subtle, but it creates a nice base setup. And with a curves adjustment, we can make the image quite interesting. Next example. As you see, after applying the macro, we get a nice glowy balanced image and as explained earlier, we can add one simple adjustment on top of it to make it amazing. In this case, I have added a shadows and highlights adjustment in soft light blend mode. By modifying this adjustment, we can get pretty amazing looks. On to our next example. Let's apply the macro. The image gets much warmer immediately and just as the previous example, adding a shadows and highlights adjustment in soft light blend mode makes the image more interesting. To wrap up this example, I have added a curves adjustment which brightens the eyes. Let's quickly compare the before and the after. The end result is a much more interesting image. Here is another example. I will apply the macro and the shadows and highlights adjustment. Awesome! To bring a tiny bit color to the model's eye, I added a pixel layer and painted around the eye area with red. With the blend mode of this pixel layer set to saturation, you get this more interesting colorful eye. I use this technique with the four layers, usually as a base for adjustments. Let me share with you a full edit. This is the original image. If I turn it off, you can see the final result. I will disable all the layers and quickly go with you through all the steps. So, here we have the four layers we used in our tutorial. On top of that, I used a brightness and contrast adjustment in multiply mode, which darkened the image. Next. I used a pixel layer with saturation blend mode, as explained in the last example, which made the eyes a bit more interesting. Next, a curves adjustment was added to brighten the image back. Time for the lips. With a pixel layer, I painted on the lips to make them more red. Now, 
There are some highlights in the face I wanted to be removed. To do that, I used a pixel layer and painted with a skin color on the brighter areas. To have it blend better, I blurred it and used the darken blend mode so it would only affect the bright areas. With the opacity, I was able to control the strength of it. Continuing with the hair, I used a selective color adjustment and brightened the yellows and applied a mask so it would only apply to the highlights in the hair. Before doing the final adjustments, I did a quick liquefying, which affected the nose, eyes and chin area. The final two adjustments are the vibrance and lens filter. With the vibrance adjustment, I lowered the saturation a tiny bit because the next adjustment, the lens filter, will bring back the saturation. Here is the before again and let's have a look at the final result. Pretty awesome. The method I explained with the four layers and a simple adjustment in this video works great on its own, but as you have seen, it is also a good starting point for further adjustments. I hope you liked this video and has given you some inspiration. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Thank you for watching, keep safe and keep being creative. Until the next video.